That's a good sized muskrat, look at that. It's bigger than Mamba. My name is Joseph Carter and I am the Mink Man. When I was a senior in high school, I started learning about the American mink. I was told that mink were horrible, vicious little animals who are impossible to tame. Challenge accepted. I've been in love with mink ever since. I get mink from fur farms and give them a new life. In this new life, my mink live as naturally as possible, even hunting for their dinner the way a wild mink would. So come join me on my adventures as we learn more about this intense little predator, the amazing American mink. Alrighty, so we got a crew here today. Uh, we're gonna be doing a little muskrat hunt. Well, we found a good little spot, and uh, let's let's show you what we found. Okay, so you see here, there's a ton of muskrat sign. We got a, a trail. If you look at this little kind of cloudy line, this is a muskrat trail, and it's going to and from all these holes along the bank. If you notice, the trail continues along here. And you can see the line where it's going. The trail goes up into this kind of snags of bushes. And they go up under there. And if you look right here, they're coming out of the hole up here. And they're using this as a feeding area. It's not really a den they're sleeping in, likely. It's just a, a convenient, safety place they can come out and feed on the, probably feeding on the crab apples here, and some of the grass up here. And then they go back down through there. And this way they can avoid walking over land. They stay right next to a hole or in the water. They feel very vulnerable when they're out in open land uh, because a hawk could dive down and grab them or a coyote jump out of the bushes and catch them. So they try and stay as close to the water or their holes as possible. You can see their tracks where they've been walking back and forth. So there's no doubt there's active muskrats here very likely multiples, we'll see. Maybe it's just one, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised at all to find two, maybe three here with as much sign as we're seeing. thousand years later okay maybe it wasn't really 2,000 years later but it sure did seem like it we waited a good long time as midnight worked the extensive muskrat tunnel system after such a long wait without seeing any sign of midnight or the muskrats I began to be concerned that maybe midnight had somehow snuck away without us noticing so I began to whistle for midnight to return somewhere else but the way this muskrat's behaving is 100% there's a mink around he never would have left his burrow looked at us and risked us catching him as he swam over to here unless there was something pursuing him so we know for sure there's a mink in here which is a relief because I was starting to wonder it'd been a while where'd the mink go It's 
funny. Every time I whistle, the muskrats come out. See, I got these muskrats trained. That was so weird. They come to my whistle. <laughs> oh, that one's poking up. Oh. Yeah, the one, the one before over there. The one before, yeah, he's poking up. Look at you with your money. Yeah. <laughs> I love watching the muskrats. <laughs> I think they're pretty. Yeah, they're kind of cool. Right? Okay. I've actually the never beaver. seen one in, like... Oh, like this? Yeah. Yeah, they're really tricky to spot. Can you separate meat because we don't want him to get in the habit of chewing into the muskrat and eating it because if he was to have killed that muskrat up in the hole the last thing we want him to do is then settle down and begin eating it because then we probably won't see him again for like four or five hours because he'll eat his fill and go to sleep the other thing is is we want the the muskrat skin in good shape so that we can sell it and when they kill them they don't do much damage but if they start eating them they destroy the pelt uh, so that's another reason um, but yeah so last thing we want is for him to learn to just start feeding from the carcass so what we do is we give him this nice prepared easy to chew up meat and it's so much more easy to eat than chewing into the muskrat and chewing through the hide and chewing up the bones so they learn basically to be be lazy eat the meat and just kill the muskrat and then get this instead <laughs> oh yes! Look! Oh, you found it! Good What's job. that, Olive? What is that? What is it? What is it? <laughs> Muskrat. Yeah. Good job. Who's this? This is Spock. This one, I just saw that move just before he went in the other hole. He's going after the other muskrat. He found it. Look at his tail shape. Look at his tail curve. I think he found the other one. Maybe not. I swear I saw his. When their yeah, tail kind of starts shaking, it usually means they found something. But there he goes. Yep, he found it. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> right behind him. There's a second one in there though. He might have caught another one. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think he caught that other one right in there. I see it. Come out. I bet she caught that other one right in the hole. I'm gonna go take a look. Oh, here he is. He's right here. He's got it right here. See, he's got it. You can tell he's got it. Okay, so the muskrat is down that way, and he had it, and he was pulling it up here. And he has it probably by the face, is my guess. He's trying to pull it up here. And then he quit, and now he's down, gone back down that way towards the water. But he has it for sure. I can hear him still like struggling with it in his breath. They have this deep breathing when they're when they're uh, dispatching something, wrestling with something, they go <sighs> Especially when it's in water, they get this deep kind of gasping breathing so you can tell they have something. still hear him gasping, so he's still telling I'm gonna get stuck like you. You want to go up there? Because no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get stuck. I'm tempted to reach down there and grab his tail, but I'm worried that he will let go. I don't want him to lose it. We'll just be patient. Or something will grab onto you. <laughs> I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> okay, let's. I think it's dead now. Let's see if I can pull him up. Hang on, big guy. Hang on. Hang on, Dad. Hang on. Oh, did you let go? How come you let go? Well, we'll go get Mamba and see if she'll pull him out. So we got Mamba just for situations like this. However, I foolishly forgot the caching box. She's trained to bring it back to the caching box. But we're going to give it a go and see if I can get her to just bring it back to me or maybe this box. Um, let's see what happens. Crap. Look at it. You want some food? Look. Look at this. What I got. Ooh, doesn't that smell good? Ooh, doesn't that smell good, huh? Doesn't that smell good? You want to get it? You got to bring back the muskrat. There she goes. I think she's got it. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl, nice. Mamba. Good girl. Good girl, Mamba. There you go. Good girl. Good mink. Good mink. Oh, that's a good mink, Mamba. Good girl. You did it without even having your caching box. Now, obviously, that wasn't too far away where that muskrat was. I really could have dug it up. But I hate messing up their burrows. You know, the muskrats put all this work into digging a burrow. And, um,. You know, I'm not here trying to exterminate the muskrats, to be honest. I'm, I'm here hunting for meat, hunting for their pelts, and hunting for the, you know, the enrichment of the mink. So, I don't want to destroy their habitat and dig up the, the muskrat if we can avoid it. Let's take a look at what she caught here. Yeah, and it's stone dead. That spot did a good job killing it. That's a good sized muskrat. Look at that. It's bigger than Wamba. So, an interesting thing about underground kills, if you notice with a lot of the kills that we film above ground, the mink bite the back of the head and they'll grab here and they kill them. So above ground, you'll find most of the kills done like this. But underground, if you notice, there's no blood on the top of his head. It's all underneath the chin. So for some reason, when they're underground, the mink typically kill with a bite to the throat. And my assumption is the mink can't really get to the back of the head. So they just grab the only thing they can grab, which is the throat. We're going to put Bear down now. We've got two muskrats on the spot at midnight. Let's see if Bear can have a, the third one. He 
He's acting like it's right there. Yeah. Look at him creep in there. Like a cat. Look, at him. Look how slow and careful he's creeping in there. Oh, here it comes. It's coming out the back. Okay, can someone uh, hand me his box? Right there, that's a good boy. Good job, Bear. Good job. That was a bear. Good boy. Hold it. I'll hold it. You want to hold it? So we had a great little hunt, it was amazing. Every mink we had caught a muskrat and uh, Bamba got to cash one. So it was great, everyone got to be involved. Uh, it's lucky that we found a spot that had three muskrats in it. And maybe there's even a fourth for all we know, but we're gonna call it good, head home. Appreciate you guys coming out with us. Hope you had fun. And uh, we'll show you guys more next time. Oh yeah? Tell me more. Give me my... Oh. Tell them about the hunt and tell them about the muskrat. She said get in the water. Oh. <laughs> What's happening now? Go away, Alpha. Go away, Alpha. Go away, Alpha. Go away, Alpha. Over here? Oh. Alex doesn't have boots. He doesn't have boots like yours. He can't go in the hour. Now if you're really wanting to dive into mink and learn the nitty gritty details, I would strongly recommend you read my book, The New Sport of Minkinry. If you would like to support us, you can buy a shirt or hat, or consider becoming one of my faithful patrons. Just go to the links in the description below.